If you're a COTs player and I mentioned the Merchant Alliance, chances are you're thinking cargo delivery, or catching animals, or finding sunken merchant vessels to reclaim lost supplies. And I mean, okay, they are still all of these things, but with a new level cap of 100, an insane new set of cosmetics to unlock, and a whole collection of brand new treasure to collect, we'll need to find better ways of gaining gold and reputation than just delivering chickens. Oh yeah, and let's not forget the new distinction system, which allows you to prestige your company to a theoretical max level of 500. We are really gonna have to pull out the big gun. Introducing Raid Voyages. Don't you hate it when you complete random world events just to get a random assortment of loot that doesn't even belong to your company? Well, Raid Voyages are here to fix that, because if you dive to take on a scaly foot in the name of the Merchant Alliance, all the treasure inside will belong to the merchants. And I'm here to find out which Raid is the best to gain as much reputation as quickly as possible. Well, seeing as how today's story takes place on release day of season 11, there was only one way to find out. But before we dive headfirst into our first Raid, it was time to check out what sorts of rewards await us at the end of the rainbow. Bro, this looks so good. Come on, give me these, uh, give me these supplies so I can go check out the other cosmetics. Order of souls, order of souls, order of souls, order of souls. I mean, it's not bad. If you're into order of souls, I think you really like this. Oh, I lost. It has a hood and it's gold. It's so good. It's so much better than order of souls. Yeah, I couldn't fake this level of excitement even if I tried. Alas, none of these cosmetics could be acquired without the prerequisite amount of reputation, and I definitely wanted that level 100 drip. To start off my day, I decided to raid a sea fort, not only because it's a good way of stocking up on supplies, but because I wanted to know how different the loot would be compared to its non-raid counterpart. And as such, we dove into the depths of the ocean to find our target. By the way, this diving mechanic, which we already know from Season 8's PvP Hourglass system, can now be used to fast travel not only to raids, but also any voyage or toll tale. Though do remember, that you cannot take any treasure with you when you decide to dive. It's more of a way to kickstart your session. The fort itself was not any more or less difficult than any other fort I've cleared before, but the loot definitely surprised me. Here it is. Oh! There's two of these. Crate of Immaculate Diamonds. I'm all about this. Hell yeah. Name something more exciting than getting your grubby pirate hands on new shiny pieces of treasure. Instead of piling the vault up high with low value items, raids award us with fewer pieces of loot that hold higher value. A blessing for solo players for sure. But sea forts are not the only formerly obsolete piece of content that has been made relevant, because apparently shipwrecks can now contain treasure befitting of a king. This was proving to be an incredibly exciting season launch with a whole bunch of brand new treasure on my ship I was giving with anticipation dying to find out how much these items would sell for. Unfortunately for me, not everything was sunshine and rainbows on this fine launch day. But money? Cool, I got reput- I got reputation- where's my money? Give me my money right now! Diamonds? Is that worth money? Why am I not getting paid? Okay, sugar is an old item. This will sell for money. This stuff is not worth any money? Are you serious right now? Okay, okay, okay now it's... Okay, it it's just lagging. All right, okay, it's like 3,000 gold. Okay, not bad. Ooh, almost 6,000 for the skull. It was ashen. Let's not forget it was ashen. Little did I know at the time that this would not be the only complication I'd arrive at throughout the day. The sea fort had granted me an adequate amount of gold given the like five minutes that it took to clear it. But everything I'm getting being subject to my emissary flag multiplier was definitely a massive boon. Sadly, I was not gonna get to keep that emissary flag because in my attempt to find out which raid gives you the best bang for your buck, I decided to take on a treasury. And well, yeah, I got sung whilst doing it. I'm just gonna disqualify treasuries and shrines because having to leave your boat unattended whilst completing them is a recipe for disaster. Especially because you can't just pick and choose one at the edge of the map like I usually would. And to add insult to injury, the loot wasn't exactly impressive. But I had a sneaking suspicion who was responsible for this. A Reaper emissary was sailing off from the direction I had parked my ship, and by god, if they were the ones who sank my ship, I would definitely not let that slide. Just that in order to execute my revenge, I had to sail into a flop, a fleet of fortune. It really isn't any different from a regular scaly fleet, just that it drops the, you know, most sought after chest in the entire game, the chest of fortune. Obviously, this world event would attract a lot of attention, and with me joining the fray, we now had three contenders. Guys, we're chill. One of you sank my ship while I was underwater. I want my supplies back. I want my supplies back. Okay, I don't have them. Okay. The Reaper has them. They sank me. I just found these in the water, sir. There's no, no, not just surprise. No, 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 no. It's your sure, show. You, you can take it. You know, it's fine. It's fine. You know, it's okay, bro. You can... There are times in this game when you are thinking about others and you think about yourself. And about 20 minutes ago, I was really thinking about myself. Uh -huh, right? Yeah. 
you know, like... It was very apparent that these guys were more scared of me than I was of them, upset as I was. As long as I got my supplies back, I could get back to my merchant grind and pretend none of this ever happened. So I left them to continue their squabbles around the fluff while I was going to collect my loot from the treasury. But unfortunately for me, that was not the last I had heard of them, because before I could set sail, they had stopped me in an attempt to make me join their alliance. Now the problem is, I didn't have any use for an alliance consisting of Order of Souls and Reapers. Unless everyone unites under the banner of the merchants, I'd be better off diving for another raid, which was going to put me on a different server anyway. In the first place, I was not a fan of how comfortable that guy was getting after having the audacity of attacking me whilst I was not on my vessel. What I'm trying to say is that it was either gonna be my way or the highway. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna change the terms here. Raise the Merchant Alliance flag and I'm gonna join your alliance. If you don't do that, I'm gonna sink your ship. <laughs> Why is everybody so mean to me? Oh, my you sank my water. damn I ship! I know, I know, I know, I know. We never ended up having an agreement, and as such, his vessel was disposed of. I left the fleet of fortune treasure to the Order of Souls fella before going off to sell my own so that I could go ahead and dive once again. My next target was a skeleton fort. Before this update, you really never had a reason to go anywhere near them because the loot was incredibly underwhelming. But as a raid? I tried to take a peek into the vault, finding more diamonds and other merchant treasure hidden within, as well as something I have never seen before. For. What is this? Yo, what is this? I need that. Whatever this is, I need it. This, my friends, is a hero item. Every company in the game has gotten one of these, and trust me, they are incredibly valuable. So here's how they work. These items can only be acquired from raids, and they come in three different tiers. I didn't get around to doing an Ashen Winds until later, because I thought I was just gonna get an Ashen Winds goal as a reward, and you do, but you also get a tier 1 hero item for the company that you chose. The Skeleton Fort awarded me with a tier 2 hero item, and reason would suggest that Phantom and Skeleton Fleets should reward me with a maximum tier 3 variety of that treasure. Naturally, not all of these raids are made equal. Some of them take longer than others, especially if you're a solo player, and as such, which one of them would be the best for my grind moving forward was yet to be decided. Okay, now time to find out how much this is worth. 10,000 gold? Whoa! That's actually, that's better than Athena. Excuse me? Your eyes do not deceive you. A tier 2 hero item sells for about as much as an average Athena chest. And considering that Athena's fortune is an endgame faction, whilst the Merchant Alliance isn't, that was quite impressive. I was determined to continue my round of testing, choosing the Phantom Fleet first, because at the time, I didn't know that the raid variety of this does not give you any wraith balls, which I wanted to then use on the Skelly Fleet. Either way, the Phantom Fleet feels a lot more manageable than the Skelly one, because even though there are more vessels you have to sink, the Phantoms just sail around in a set pattern, whereas Skeletons can accelerate, decelerate and take turns however they please. And if they start bombarding you with cursed cannonballs as a solo, you could be in trouble. Which I was anyway, because of course I had a random skelly sloop spawn on me in the middle of the encounter. Funny as it was to see it actually take shots at the phantoms, it was still more trouble than it was worth, so I had to take them out. And eventually, I would be granted my reward. Oh? Is it- is it the thing? Wait, I think it is the thing. Hold up. The thing! Yo, it's gold! Yo, this one isn't blue! Three pieces of loot? This better be worth a lot. Drum roll, please. 22,500 gold! It's better than a chest of fortune! What? The reputation, though! Okay, what I hadn't realized at the time was that I sold this thing during gold rush hour. Tier 1 hero items sell for 5,000 gold, tier 2 grant you 10,000 gold, and tier 3 pieces grant you as much as 15,000 gold pieces, not including your emissary bonus. The reputation they grant you, however, is the real selling point, because it is insane. Now here's the thing, I had already seen what kind of a loot haul you can expect from a fleet of fortune by virtue of that Order of Souls emissary, and it was a lot of treasure, more so than I remember ever getting from my phantom fleet. So before I declare the phantom armada the best raid to do in order to grind out your merchant reputation, I had to raid a skelly fleet to see what sorts of rewards I can expect. And as expected, this raid was giving me a lot of trouble, but not for the reasons that I highlighted. For every other raid, you would surface a little ways away from the event, but for some reason a skelly ship had risen together with me. And it wasn't just one, but two of them that had surrounded me. Double the amount of cannons, double the amount of curses, and double the amount of stress for me as I tried to somehow complete this raid. And soon I found out why this was happening, because you see, a Another ship had entered the raid, and more ships in the event means higher difficulty. And unlike the previous encounter I had at a fleet, these guys were not scared of me at all. I was at a massive disadvantage. Not only did I have to fight two versus one on top of the skelly ships, but now this storm was coming towards me. Unlike them, I can't steer and repair at the same time, so I had no choice but to back out. The deck was stacked against me, but I hadn't given up yet. Victory in naval combat was out of the question, but that doesn't mean that I couldn't find a different way to come out on top.
Okay, close to Reaper, I, I get Calm Waves at least, so that's good. It's annoying that that's a duo, because that can repair really quickly. Me too, man, me too. I keep whiffing, man. Reaper Cannons? I don't know if I have LOS. Come on, boat. I need a ram play here. He's freaking out. He's freaking out. He can't see me. The bomb munition chat. They sank another merchant. What the heck? No, no. Damn it. Yeah, this is just upper upper deck damage only. It's gonna take absolute ages. Here we go, chat. Our voyage. Good boat. Good boat. Good boat! Let's go! If there's one thing you should take away from this, it's to never put yourself between a merchant and their cargo. With this nuisance taken care of, I could finally go about completing my Skelly fleet. And yeah, this was every bit as annoying as I expected it to be. But something wasn't right. The treasure I got from that Skelly Galleon was not just merchant cargo, which is the whole point of a raid. And going back into my footage, you can also see the banner being that of a generic fleet as opposed to the merchant flavored one you would expect. Something had clearly bugged out and I was not happy about it. I guess that's why they say to never play on launch day. And to make matters worse, the dang Saloop decided to come back just as I was finishing the boss wave. And because they showed up, all the treasure ended up sinking before either of us had a chance to harpoon it out of the water. If I sound annoyed, that's because I am. I'm not usually one for senseless TDMing, but I spawn camped these guys whilst fire sinking them for like a solid few minutes. I'd be remiss to not give them the fight that they so clearly desired, but there was definitely a level of catharsis in sending them to the ferryman over and over again after they just cast me my loot hole. Either way, I know you're not here to watch me club some swabbies for extended periods of time, so all that was left to do was dive again and finish this for good. After hours and hours of experimentation, I would finally be able to come to a conclusion. Oh, they stopped? We got him, nice. Anchor, 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 anchor. Okay, now we know exactly where they sank. That was it, that's the boss wave. We can finally figure out how much loot we actually get off of this. You cannot be serious. Yeah, to say I was underwhelmed would definitely be an understatement. You get the exact same amount of loot from a Skelly fleet as you would from a Phantom Armada, but both of them are honestly a bit too much work for a humble solo slooper such as myself. Sure, I don't get the best hero item from an Ashen Winds, but since I can complete it in as little as 4 minutes and I don't need any supplies beyond my sword and a blunderbuss, it's a very quick, easy and low risk way of farming reputation. But if I did have a crew, I'd probably rather complete Phantom fleets over Skeleton ones, simply because the ghostly storage crates can also be sold to the merchant. And also, people won't mistake them for a fleet of fortune, so chances aren't as high that we will be bothered. Either way, Rare has done a really good job in balancing rewards based on how much time you spend on any given voyage. So at the end, I just did a little bit of everything until I finally hit that coveted level 100. But this is it for me here today. If you want to see more of the Merchant of Death, what about you check out my episode on the easiest way to make money? You can find the code on screen right now. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you guys have a day filled with riches on the sea. And until next time, peace.